Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. This is Fishman blog number 52, which is really crazy because that means I've been doing these for an entire year now. I only started in the beginning to help me get through all those lockdowns, but it's gotten to the point now where I actually really enjoy doing them and I hope you guys enjoy watching them. And I plan on keeping it going for at least the foreseeable future. I wanted to start off with this clip of my, <laughs> my fish room manager here. Uh, this is his chair, as you can tell by all the scratches and the stains. He just likes to sit there, watch what I do, and in this particular case, also bat around a bunch of straw. Now, this is the Java Moss bog filter, and I had put in some uh, pennywort, as you can see here, and it is not thriving as well as I'd hoped, but it looks like it's still growing, and it should hopefully bounce back. Now, the other reason why I'm showing you a clip of this is... If you remember, I had put in four uh, large African cichlids. They were red by red zebras. Uh, there were culls that were going to go to another aquarium. But I put them in here, and I wanted to see how the chemistry of the tank would change. And actually, it was uh, kind of interesting. It, it was showing that it was able to deal with all the extra ammonia from all the extra feeding that it was getting. So I popped in a couple more culls because uh, I needed to move them out. And my mistake was leave them in a little too long. Because without the tank boss that they had to keep them under control, uh, one decided it was going to start killing off all the others, and I had a bit of an ammonia spike uh, and uh, an increase in nitrate as well. But it's all dying down now. The filter is actually really kind of cool. It's really handling it nicely. It was unfortunate to lose the fish, uh, but I was really busy, as I said last week, and I didn't spot it in time. So what I've done here is I put it in a temporary piece of acrylic across the tank, moved all the fish over into that other side because someone had asked me if I had noticed a, a spike in growth in the fish. And I said, well, I had in the guppies because I thought they were bigger now. So I moved them all over there and I put some guppies in on this side and uh, the rest of the angels, you can see they're still quite uh, unsure of things because they had just done it. And not really so much in the angels but definitely in the guppies uh, but then again the angels uh, once i moved half of them out the ones that were remaining had a bunch of extra room as well so i think they kind of canceled each other out so here's the tank uh, there's a bunch of extra stuff in it now because i am cleaning out another aquarium uh, which i'll show you in the uh, shortly and it's i'm actually really happy with this but there's definitely a lot more work that needs to be done the most important part of which, of course, is getting its bog filter up and running. And as you can see, I've done absolutely nothing about that since putting it in there. Hopefully that'll be coming up shortly. This is the aquarium that had the angels in it, and I moved them all out and stripped it down, cleaned it. And it is now ready for the next round of filters versus ammonia. And that is going to be involving head-to-head uh, -head for uh, three box filters. The first one is going to be uh, the one Aaron sent me. This is the 3D printed filter, and it's definitely fully charged now. I'm just going to wipe off a bit of that uh, Java Moss you see at the top there, just to make sure there's nothing blocking its flow. And then it's going to get its first spike, and then I think I'm going to probably do three spikes for each filter, and we're going to see how they all compare to each other. This is the dollar store build. <laughs> and there's no reason why it shouldn't do well, at least uh, hopefully not as well as the other two. That's the high-tech one and my favorite filter, uh, my favorite box filter, which is the two-stage, which is coming up here shortly. Uh, but you never know, so I want to do that and see if all this extra work to make these things is worthwhile. Now, this is a little cloudy at the moment because I had just uh, gone through here with a siphon, took a little mum off the bottom, and... Uh, clean that filter out so it got stirred up a little bit but they've been doing ext extremely well so we'll see how they all compare so these are the adults the breeding group i have for the bosmani rainbows and they are prolific they've been doing really well they're very colorful they're very healthy and happy and they've been producing an awful lot of fry this is the second round of fry i've been collecting and as you can see, they're doing well. Actually mixed in here is about a half a dozen goldfish fry. If I spot one while I'm looking at it uh, and doing this editing, I will, oh, there's one. I'll put an arrow towards it so you can see it. There's a slight difference in uh, their shape and size. Uh, and as you see, they're doing really well. And I need space for them to grow more. So I am going to be cleaning out another tank for them. And you'll see that coming up shortly as well. 
This is the original fry that I uh, first worked out how to raise them up and make them fat and happy. And as you can see, they're doing really well. Uh, they are now on flake food and brine shrimp, uh, baby brine shrimp. And as you can see, they're doing uh, very, very nicely. Also, some uh, they get some microworms as well. Now I want to show you one other clip of babies here, and that is the killifish. Uh, these are gardener Achilles, and I was kind of hesitant about leaving the fry in here because I thought they would predate on, you know, the younger, younger fry. But I actually have been seeing quite a few different ones in there, and so that's not a problem. But there is one that's coming up that I do have to address, and that is there's a young male. I'm going to see it right near the end of the clip. He's starting to color up, and there's going to be a bit of aggression between him and the dominant male. There he is there on the left, and I need to actually take all the fry out and put them in their own aquarium now. So this is a potato I put in there just to see how it would do, because I thought maybe I can do a little hydroponics or aquaponics with it. Uh, it's just too big. It, it grows too well. I am going to pull all these out and uh, I'm going to try something else, uh, something different with it, because... It just definitely takes up too much space, and I just don't have the room for it. So this is the tank that the uh, it had guppies in it, and it also had the planter pots in it, and this is where the rainbow fry are going to go. And I originally started doing this because I wanted to see if the soil in the planter pots would leach out enough uh, material that these would grow better. And fortunately and unfortunately, depending on how you want to look at it, it's too good. It's uh, it's giving it too much nutrient. Not enough that you're going to actually measure it as far as uh, like measuring nitrate and that sort of thing. But as you can see, uh, it's, this grows too much. I spend too much of my time pruning and resetting and, and stuff like that on these tanks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, uh, for one other reason as well, which I'll mention here in a second, I'm going to switch these planter pots uh, not all of them, just the, this one here and a couple others, to gravel only to see how they do that way. Uh, part of the reason for that is, uh, besides the nutrient leach uh, getting to be excessive, I'm noticing that these, uh, with the soil in, even though when I pulled these out of the soil, they weren't, uh, there wasn't any smell, there wasn't any sense of them being anaerobic or anything, but they aren't thriving. Uh, if you remember from last week's video, I was showing you the arrow leaf plants, and they were starting to wilt, and I thought maybe it was some sort of disease or some other thing that has contaminated them. Uh, it doesn't seem to be the case. They just don't seem to like having their roots wet in soil. So I'm going to try setting these up with just gravel to see if uh, it makes a difference because these two here have been just sitting in water and that hasn't been a problem at all. So this is going to be more of an aquaponics style setup. In other words, they're going to get their nutrients from the fish, uh, which is better from my perspective in the sense that uh, they won't, you know, the plants won't grow too much and cause like way too much extra work in the fish room. And then we'll see how the plants, uh, these particular plants do that way as well. So that's uh, one of the things I'm switching over slightly. I'm not going to switch them all over. I'm going to do a little clip there in a minute, uh, which is going to be probably the last clip of this uh, video, which is going to show you how I've rearranged them because I've had to prune some of them back and uh, like I've thinned it down a little bit. I still like the look of plants above the aquarium, but I don't want it to end up resulting in, uh, like I said, too much nutrient and too much plant growth in the actual aquarium itself. So you can see here, uh, this is one of the aluminum plants I put in soil, and it's not growing anywhere near as many roots as I thought it would at this point. So what I'm going to do here is, again, I'm going to take the soil away, and I'm going to see how it does uh, just with gravel and, uh, and obviously, you know, whatever nutrient it can pull out of the water from uh, the fish wastes. So these are the first two that I'm going to do. The fern is doing really, really well. haven't had any issues with it at all. Uh, but I had a little bit of trouble with the prayer, prayer, <laughs> prayer plant as well. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. That. I just pruned it back for the moment, and we'll see how that all goes. So as you can see here, this is a little bit less uh, jungly than it was, and I'm going to try this out for a little bit and see how it does. Uh, that soil and uh, land moss is doing exceptionally well still, and I haven't had any issues with that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to move that to an aquaponics setup, but we'll see. 
So this prayer plant here is obviously pruned back quite a bit. Like I said, I was having a little bit of issues with that, but not nearly as much as I was with the arrow leaves. And as you see, this is uh, doing really nicely. I am going to pull a top off of this sometime next week and uh, do a bit of work in there and see how that is um, progressing. I may uh, try out a second one with just um, gravel uh, and one of the other aquariums just to see if it really needs the soil. Uh, but that'll be for a later time. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, definitely leave comments, let me know what you think. And as always, thank you so much for sticking with these vlogs for a year. And I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.